So I apologize for the quality um, of the light. I haven't gotten around to hanging my LEDs in the ceiling yet. So the tail end of the shop is usually pretty dark. I supplement it with some stand up lights, but in general, it's a little bit darker than other parts of the shop. Um, but this is going to be my next project. It's going to be a multi-part series. It should be at least three videos. It's gonna be a little longer than normal for two main reasons. One of those is there was a lot of custom details on this, the legs, these columns, all of that sort of stuff, and the fact that the frame isn't square um, just added to the build time. And um, so that will obviously translate into, into longer videos. But also because this channel, at least my goal with the channel, has always be, been to be an educational channel. I'm hoping people can watch these videos and either learn how to make their own furniture or get better at making their own furniture. Or even if you're having someone make furniture for you, see some of the more proper ways to make furniture so you don't get bamboozled because there's a lot of people out there that just don't make great quality uh, pieces, of, pieces of furniture. So with that in mind, I've, I've started to, in some of, and I'm gonna start on this project, slowing down some of the clips. I sometimes speed them up a little bit too fast because I don't like the videos to be super long. And um, that will, will make obviously the clips longer. And I don't like these, I like to shoot for like a 15 to 20 minute window. I would love them to be less than that because people watch shorter videos on YouTube a lot more often, but um. If you get over 20 minutes, it's really when people really don't stop, they don't watch the videos, they're just too long. So that's kind of the goal for this project. So with that said, usually these build videos are like three videos or so. This one will probably be more. Um, but that's pretty much it. This is about to be stained, so I wanted to get the intro in before it leaves my shop. And um, you'll see all the detail elements in the build. I do have SketchUp drawings for this because with this customer, in order to, to nail down all the details, it was easiest to make the drawing beforehand because they knew exactly what they wanted. So I will eventually have um, build plans for this for sale. But to be perfectly honest, the SketchUp drawing is only half the battle. Converting that into, I uh, use PowerPoint to make the plans. So turning the SketchUp drawings into, into the PowerPoint is quite time consuming. So there's no guarantee, I have no, no deadline or, or whatever for when these will be ready because I'm actually behind on plans anyway. But I will eventually have build plans for this project if, if people want something like that. But as always, I think this is something that you can build just by, just by watching the videos. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So as I said, I have the SketchUp model already pretty much done. Um, the dimensions of this are 21 inches deep, 34 and a half inches tall, because there will be a half inch top on this, 47 inches wide. So in the SketchUp drawing, I've highlighted anything that's colored is what is going to be built in this, in this video. And that is the basic base frame, which is kind of the foundation for all of the other parts. Now these drawers in the front here look like they're inset, but they're not. There's no face frame, it's all full overlay. So that was part of the design element that dictated how I made this initial frame. And if I remove some of these parts, you'll see the beginning part of this video. What I'm gonna show you, all of this frame is mortised and tended together. And that's what will take probably pr pretty much the longest part um, of getting this initial frame together, just because I wanted it to be as, as sturdy and as structural as possible. So to start this, I've, this is a combination of, going to be a combination of oak ply and oak hardwood. I ordered this wood off of Woodworker Source, which I've been doing for years intermittently. It's not as cheap to then going to the sawmill, but it does save a lot of time in my shop with milling and, and joining lumber. But I'm just pointing out um, the, the prices of everything have gone up and the quality of materials across the board with everything have just gone down. You can see there's sawmill marks on these boards. A lot of them have knots and really the whole point of getting this lumber is so you don't have to work around sawmill marks and knots. And sawmill marks don't really bother me, but you could see on that one board there was quite a few. And then that large knot on the one piece, and these are also pretty bowed. I just mentioned this because this is just 
very um, counteractive to an ex the experiences I've had with this company in the past. And some of the boards were actually 7 eighths of an inch thick, while other ones were 3 sixteenths, which completely negates the purpose of getting pre-planed lumber, because now I have varying differences of thickness. Now this is something I should go and complain to the company about, but I did want to point that out for people that order lumber online. Usually this stuff comes perfect and I don't have to do anything to it, but this time I was pretty disappointed um, with the quality of the materials. But with that said, I still forged ahead, and I'm going to rough cut out all of my pieces. You can see I have little stub tenons that are going in the back of this. I didn't want to have super large tenons on this piece because then you'd have to remove very large mortises. So there are little stub tenons just to hold the frame together, and these bottom frame pieces are two and a half inches wide. So you can see I have marked my tenons on both sides. This is the back, and I have the length written down, which I believe was 45 and a half. All of these dimensions are going to be based on the final dimensions of the piece. And then the front part of this is all mitered. Now I just got this chop saw, and I usually don't cut my miters on my old chop saw because they weren't super accurate. But because this is a newer saw, I, I made a test cut of the miter. The best way to tell if these are going to be straight is to put a square on it. And if there's undulations um, in the thickness of the miter, you'll be able to see it on where the square aligns. These were pretty perfect, so I decided to cut all of my miters on the chop saw. Just makes it a little bit quicker than having to change out the miter on the radial alarm saw. So for these, these sides, I have a miter in the front and the back is square. So I cut the miter first and then cut the beast down to 21 inches. It's just a little bit easier to do it that way. And then I can mark up the mortises on the back corner. You can see I have the tenons marked. I'm going to be removing the top and bottoms for the shoulders on this. And the thickness of the mortise I could transfer to that back side. And then I usually use the three-part rule, which is the dimension of the piece. You divide it by three. So I have um, about a three-eighths three inch mortise is what I usually do. And then this is the mortising machine set, set up. It's a little bit different process because I'm cutting these on the back side instead of on the edge. So I have, you see two stops in place, and then the bit is going to get stuck in this because the, the, the fence that usually helps you pull the bit out is just too high on this mortising machine. Um, I'd fix this a little bit later to make this process faster, but you could see I'm just basically floating this piece in between my two stops, and I'll get perfect mortises on all of my pieces. Um, sometimes on jigs I don't spend the time to set this sort of stuff up, but because I'm making two of these at the same time, that means all of this is being done at least four times. And then because I have two sides on everything, you're, the process of making two at a time, it quickly means you're doing multiple things multiple times. And to get it the most accurate, I'm setting up jigs. You can see what I was just showing was the test tenon for the mortises. So I always, I always keep scrap. This is just cut off from the, the same exact uh, hardwood I'm using. And I made a test tenon to make sure that everything was going to be flush and perfect before I go through and cut all of my tenons. I don't, I'm trying not to ruin any of this wood here. So you can see it was just a matter of I raised the blade of the radial arm saw and then set a stop and I could go through and cut all of my tenons so they are identical. Um, with the construction of this piece, this is always important, but some pieces is more important than others. It was really important all these pieces were square, which is why I spent so much time setting up all of these jigs. And then to remove those shoulders on the top and the bottom, it's the exact same jig uh, clamped to the fence, but I just raised the blade in order. I think I went about three quarters of an inch down. And this is just so that you're not removing a ton of material from the back side um, of that piece of wood. This just makes the mortise smaller. There's a little flange left over, and I'm just going to go through and uh, knock those off. And like I said, I'm cutting all of the miters on the chop saw. So I have a fence set up here because I need, I believe these were three inches in the front for the miters, and I can just cut um, all four of those. Once again, two pieces. 
uh, two, two pieces of furniture, so I'm cutting those all at once. And then there's little stops um, on the other side of the square, which I cut the 45 first, and then I cut them down to size on the radial arm saw. So this is what is going to make that front corner that kind of sticks out from the frame. Like I said, this is a, a, a nice looking piece of furniture, but these detail elements, instead of just making the square, is really what adds on to the time of, of builds like this. So this is what this looks like uh, clamped up, and then I'm gonna be cutting mortise and tenons for this front piece as well. Now I will change this a little bit for the top, but as I was building this, I realized, I don't think I realized it at this point, but I think it was during the glue up, it would have been smarter to have this piece in the front go all the way to the edge and end in a dado versus having it floating in the center like that, and then have those front edges um, end in dados in that piece. This is not structurally unsound, but I do wish I would have built it the other way, if that makes sense. I will make that change in, in the plans. So basically what I'm doing instead is I have the same mortise, it's the same size in, that, in this little uh, miter nub that is in the front. You can see at this point I added a stop with some clamps in the front so that I don't have to keep the, the, the mortise won't pull up that piece, the, that clamp holds it down, and then I could cut the, the same setup on the front with the tenons. I have all these jigs still in place, and I'm cutting all this stuff at the same time so everything mates up perfectly. So that is the tenon, and then removing that top shoulder again. Sometimes I cut these off with a handsaw, but it was easy enough to just make that straight cut with the with the radial arm saw and then I could put these in place. So like I said, if I was doing this again, that front piece would go all the way across and end in dados on both sides um, instead of doing these mortises. Like I said, this is this is not compromised the structure of the piece. It just would have been a little bit easier and a little bit stronger to have changed that design slightly. But those are basically my two frames. I was pretty happy with the progress at this point. And then I'm going to start cutting down some sheet goods. This is three quarter inch red oak. This stuff is going for about $90 a sheet nowadays. And I'm just cutting down the partitions, which are about 27 inches tall. Um, and then I'm also me cutting down some slivers, and you'll see what I'm using the slivers for. But this is just rough cutting these pieces at, at this point. One of the reasons I moved my table behind the saw was to make this easier. And this was another problem, and I did complain to Lowe's about this. I had this delivered because I'm building a built-in at the same time, so I needed something ridiculous like 15 or 20 sheets of ply delivered. Um, so I, I usually decide to deliver that instead of going getting it at that point. And the forklift completely ruined the backside of one sheet of plywood. Luckily, because of the construction of this, I was able to hide that. But the quality of materials these days is just awful. So in order to put these partitions in, I'm going to be basically bracketing them with some th smaller sheets of plywood. So they'll stand vertically. It's a great way to strengthen up the frame of this and also keep those partitions vertical. So I'm gonna be doing that with dados. So at this point, you can see I, I drew out all the dados on the back, and that will basically, the partitions will be for the edges, as well as where all the draw boxes are going to go. That's what the measurements were based on. And I'm doing through dados. I could do stop dados, which is gonna be easier to do through dados. And I have the front and back piece clamped together so that they're identical. And then once they're clamped, I'm making sure that I have the same measurement on each side, which is three inches. So that means that when I cut all these dados, it's three inches on both sides, and I take this apart and reassemble it, front to back, the, the dados are perfect. So once again, because all this plywood is different thicknesses nowadays, I um, put did some test cuts to make sure it was going to fit into the frame perfectly. I believe this oak actually was in fact um, three quarters of an inch. Some of the plywood is not. And then I just have the dado stack set up with the miter gauge. I broke this miter gauge a while ago, but it still works with this washer um, holding everything down. 
And then it's just a simple matter of I have a stop that's set back from the blade so that this wood doesn't bind on the blade. And I'm just going to cut a series of these dados. This will make sense when you, when you see it all together exactly what I'm doing. So I could flip it on both sides. You can see I'm cutting one side and then flipping it. And I'm doing that on both because I have a front and a back for two pieces of furniture. And that is how I get all of these identical. Because the drawer boxes are going in place, it's really important that the, these sides I'm making are square and are the same distance from the edge front to back or all the fronts of my drawer boxes are going to need to be tweaked. So I'm just, it's once again, just a series of, I th think there was two, four, eight, eight dados on the front and the back, and I'm just moving the, the fence over and I could cut um, all four of one at the same time. This is just showing you, I'm just lining it up with my marks and then I could just send it through each time. I have a little arrow on there, making sure I know which way is forward. And, and that is how I went about doing this. So now this process is going to make a little bit more sense. I could take these apart. You can see there's the back with all of the dados, the front with all of the dados that are identical because I had them clamped together and was cutting them at the exact same time. And the same thing with the other piece as well. And then these are those smaller strips of plywood you saw me cutting. And the reason they're shorter is because when I put the base in, now it will be perfectly flush with the front. And like I said, these through dados you won't see because these cabinet pieces are going to come to the front, but I could fill those with scrap of oak. And then you can see how the vertical partitions I'm going to put in are going to be sandwiched between these pieces and everything is square. So this is the most important part of this build. If you don't build this square and it doesn't get glued up square, you're going to be fighting the process the rest of the way. That is why this entire video is took the time to show you how to do this. And it was probably the longest process of the build because it is so important that everything is square. And I designed it um, in this way to make it as structural as possible, but also so that all of those pieces are square. And then you can see I'm just gluing together this frame. I have those little two supports in the dados. Those are just dummy supports at this time. I was originally going to glue the frame and the supports together all at the same time, but it would have just been too much, too much time. And the open window time of this glue is only about 20 minutes. So what I did was I glued the frame together, made sure it was square with those supports just kind of tacked into place. And then the next day I could come in and, and glue all that plywood together. I have this clamped down to the, the built-in I'm also building for the same client as underneath of it. And that just held everything true. You can check my diagonals. When your diagonal measurements match, it's square, making sure that my partitions are square. And like I said, this is the next day I could come in and glue all of these uh, partitions in. These will also keep front to back the same distance, especially hardwood, it likes to bow over long spans. So all these partitions being the exact same distance will make sure there's no bowing in the front or the back of the frame. And then that's what those partitions glued in place will look like. So this one on the edge, um, it hits that front part. So I had to tweak this one a little bit. I'm making it as long as the piece, but I have to cut a little notch out of it in order to make it work. The date on the back's not affected because there's no bump out in the back. So I lined it up with my mark and then I marked where it would hit the frame in the front. You can see there's that mark. So that is going to dictate the depth, um, how far back the cut has to go. And then I marked where it needs to go in the front and that is going to be how much material has to be removed in the front. So this is basically going to be a shallow lap I'm cutting. I'm going to do that on the radial arm saw. I have a stop set up because at this point all of these are identical. I have to make four of these. It's just showing you how dinged up that plywood is. But I could cheat it to the inside of the drawer boxes because you'll never see it. And that's how I made that work out. And then those are those vertical partitions. 
You can see how they're set back from the frame because I have to do f a full, the, the drawers and the cabinets are essentially full overlay. They're, they're not inset, which is what I thought they were at first looking at the, 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 the picture the customer sent me. So that's why all these partitions are set back. All the drawers and the, the doors will cover everything. There's, there's technically no face frame, visible face frame to this project. So my end pieces, once again, in the design, there's a little bit of a lip showing on the frame. So the end pieces, I'm cutting about a quarter inch of material out to, to make that lip. So like I said, this is the frame is about two and a half inches wide. So I'm just cut a groove two and a half inches up and then I could cut the front off and that will that will make this this essentially a lap across the the bottom of the piece, a very big rabbit, if you will. And then that is what will fit on the edges of the frame. Now, at this point, I also decided that this probably all could have been done, the inner frame at least, out of half inch plywood to make the piece a little bit lighter. Um, like I said, this is not going to affect it. It's just going to be a very heavy piece of furniture. I probably could have made all these partitions out of half inch. So this, because it's, it's, um, it has to go further back than the center partitions sticks out a little bit. So I'm going to cut a little groove off the front in order for the back to go back further because these side panels are wider than the, than those inner partitions. This was pretty easy work. I just marked the depth. You could see the cut in the back and then it slides in place and then it's flush with the the front of the other partition because those columns I built are going to be going on the front there so that has to be that has to be square with each other there it is lined up with my mark you put the square across the front and it's flush so my columns will cover that nicely and then that is all the all the partitions in place that's what they're going to look like this is pretty sturdy at this point without even having any screws or anything in it